Welcome to Harmonium LA, the podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Heady Gandolfi, emotional wellness expert, founder of Harmonium LA, and published author. The world needs healing now more than ever. My goal is to bring you inspiring conversations, tips, and techniques that will help you build a sustainable healing toolkit. The Harmonium LA podcast is the only resource you will need to slow down, stop searching, and start healing. Welcome back to another episode of Stop Searching and Start Healing. So today's guest is probably one of the most incredible human beings that I have ever had the pleasure of meeting. Her presence just shines out of her like a ray of sunshine. She truly magically just lights up any room that she walks into. And not only that, she has the voice of an angel, a Grammy award-winning angel at that. So let me give you a little bit of a bio about her and then we'll bring her in and we'll just get started with the show. Grammy award-winning vocalist, songwriter and actress, Gila Plitman is known worldwide for her unique expressive quality as well as her effortless glittering voice and her ability to present challenging works of music with dexterity. She has performed on many Grammy award-winning albums and continues to accumulate an impressive catalogue of virtuosic recordings. Hans Zimmerman's Grammy award-winning soundtrack for The Da Vinci Code, Eric Whitaker's Good Night Moon with the LSO, Oscar winner John Corigliano's song right cycle Mr. Tambourine Man with the Buffalo Symphony for which she won the best female vocalist Grammy. Emmy Award winner Jeff Beale's The Paper Line Shack with the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra and Richard Daniel Poor's The Passion of Yushua with Buffalo Symphony Orchestra to name a few. Gila performs with many leading orchestras around the world, working with the likes of the Los Angeles Philharmonic, the New York Philharmonic, the National Symphony, the Israeli Symphony, and the London Symphony Orchestra, and outstanding conductors such as Leonard Slatkin, Esa Pekka Salonen, Thomas Adres, Carl Sinclair, Giancarlo Guerrero, Robert Spano, and Joanne Falletta. A unique crossover artist, her own songs and arrangements can be heard and seen on YouTube and social media platforms. And she collaborates regularly within the realms of jazz, film, classical, and world music. Her deepest wish is to spread light and love to others through her art and all her endeavors. She has a black belt in Taekwondo and lives with her son and their cat in Los Angeles. So let's welcome Gila without any further ado to today's show. So Gila, welcome to the show. I'm just so, so thrilled that you are here. Oh my so God. Thrilled. I'm so excited that you're doing this. Yeah. And I'm so moved that you're starting mm. on this road that is just so absolutely you. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. So just, just so people have a little bit of a backstory about us. So we met I want to say it's probably nearly four years ago now, I think, um, through Soul Cycle, which is one of my passions and definitely was one of the first steps into my journey of, of self-healing um, back in, in the day. And so, you know, it's no surprise and no coincidence because everything happens for a reason, I believe, um, that not only did we connect through, um, I guess, a modality that we were both using as healing at that time, okay. but that um, we share the same birthday we are both divorced. We both have kids that are the same age, probably within a couple of months of each other. Um, you spend a lot of time living in London. Um, and so it's just, it just, it's just beautiful and divine, I think, that, you know, we should cross paths yeah. because there are no coincidences. Yeah. You know, in, in that same vein of, of everything being a mirror and a reflection, mm -hmm. uh, just whenever, even when I'm writing in class with you by my side, mm -hmm. there's something about it that is in, a, in essence metaphysical almost to me, because there is, there's a quality between us that is beyond any conversation and any, any capacity for a cognitive, cognitive mm -hmm. understanding. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the day you told me that we shared the same birthday, I was, I was really kind of blown away. <laughs> you know? And, and, you know, and there's, I, I actually don't know very much about your, if you, about a musical background with you, mm. but. You know what, probably I used to play the piano, you know, I did up to grade, well, I don't even know when I was young in high school, probably up to grade 
six or seven in piano. You know, I have a little bit, but nothing like in comparison. Well, to I have to tell you, that's extraordinary because you're, I mean, you know this and there's no, there's no coincidences and there's a reason why Soul Cycle is such a passion for you. Right. Because your integration into the music and into the, the rhythm and your capabilities mm. of really honing in are so extraordinary. And I think there's a connection for you and I in there too. That's, mm. that's very, very deep. And, and also with, with harmonium, um, mm. because so much has to do with sound and yeah. with vibration. Exactly, and with energy, because we're working with with energy, you know, and that's what's so magical about the whole thing. And I agree with you. I think with Soul Cycle, and I I know that you have as well the connections that you make in that room. Well, how it used to be in that dark room when you're in that space, and you are in such a close proximity to each other, um, you can't help but to pick up. And and there's times when you ride next to somebody and it's just off, and you're like can't get out of the room quick enough. <laughs> but then there are other times where you just have this connection and then that person just becomes part of your journey yeah. and your passion. And I think because you just have this loud music pumping and you just, like you say, you're in the moment and you're in that space and the rhythm, but you know, I think your feelings are the language of the subconscious, right? And our words are the language of the conscious mind. And so when, when you're in that space of soul cycle and you're in that room and that environment, you're just listening and trusting your feelings. Entirely. And I think that is a huge part of it too. And well, they, the, the way they've, they've developed this, it, it is, it's absolute self-healing. I mean, Gina mm -hmm. always says it's the cheapest therapy in, in town, Absolutely. right? Um, because it does, it integrates that quality of music and self-reflection along with personalities of these instructors that are so, um, they're so self-connected mm -hmm. and they really talk from their own truths. And, you know, sometimes you connect with one more than you, you do the other. Awesome. But for me, as, I, as, as you and I have spoken, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the certain ones that I've connected with have allowed that quality in myself of recognizing um, of, of allowing me to, to really, really be more truly myself and giving, giving that permission uh, of, of self-expression and self-love and realization, really. Yeah. And my, my life has personally completely changed since I started taking that class. hundred percent. I can't, you know, and I remember, I'm sure you remember your very first class and the instructor. And I know I remember mine and I just, what on earth is this? I had no idea what, it was all over the place, but very quickly I realized how healing and I think for exactly that reason that you say it allows you to cr they crack you open you know the music and the instructors if you find and connect to the right one it gives you permission and because it's the darkness you know the number of times I've ridden that bar crying my eyes out absolutely sobbing you know another time if euphoric and laughing and but all of the things but it allows you that range of emotion to process because when you're healing and moving through that journey, you have to be able to express in whichever way comes most naturally at any given time, no matter where you are. Yes. yes. And one of the things has been hearing you sing during <laughs> class because that is the most, um, I mean, I said in the introduction, just your voice is so magical. It's like the voice of an angel and to hear, to be riding and then all of a sudden to hear you across the room, you know, singing as part of your healing, I'm guessing, it's just, it's, that, that was and that was part of it as well for me because I um, I grew up with so much music and it really became a profession from, from a very young age from mm. about 14 um, and but it was always kind of enclosed as just a separate almost a separation life right. is life and then there's me on stage or you know being able to truly bring that quality of light and of, of this passion for the universe but just there mm. and there was something in the class because you know I don't know if you used to ride with Ben Brooker and he was my Lindsay. first instructor he was my first class <laughs> and, then, and then Lindsay Simjic and then of course yeah. of mm. course Gina and, yeah. and you know, Janet and Madeline yeah. you know and there this is on and on so many they're all so mm. much themselves um mm. that it, it started creating this urge for me wait a minute I feel like I need to sing and they're, they're saying it's okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And it kind of thinned those boundaries, that veil, that, that those walls that we 
thought we had, or I thought mm -hmm. that between that quality of daily living and the, the kind of mysterious, mystical, elevated idea of, of how I really wanted to live, it, it broke it down. Like you said, they break you open. It broke mm -hmm. those walls down for me. And part of it was me expressing myself in song and saying, I don't even care if does it bother anybody. They don't like it. They do like it. It isn't about that. It's yeah. about the process of kind of so. Being authentic and being authentic to you and to being able to express yourself fully because, you know, that's what you do. So let's just go back and talk about you and your journey to get you where you are today. Because, I mean, excuse me, but three Grammys, by the way. Just amazing! Congratulations! Well, not just exactly. recently I want three Grammy winning albums, and I'm right. I can't tell you how thrilled I am. For I mean, and so you should be. I mean, just phenomenal, just to be able to achieve that. So, you know, let's talk more about that and how your healing journey kind of played into that as well, perhaps. You know, it in some ways it's the that the whole journey of my my professional life has been almost like a mystery to me. And I'm still trying to, to kind of unpack it and understand it. But, mm -hmm. um, but truly, actually, these days, I'm less and less trying to understand it and just surrender to its, to its yeah. flow. And yeah. I think maybe that's part of where, where the healing takes place or the, the, the kind of entering into well-being, right. uh, which sometimes something, something like an award is an, a, an expression of that, right? Right. Um, the, the quality of, of expressing myself in song and in music and on stage and also as an actress um, and in poetry were always like second nature to me. Mm. That always made absolute sense since I was a little girl. And I had really no choice but to follow it. <laughs> mm. And that's part of the mystery of it, to, to, I think to many artists, of course. Um, and the magic to yeah. yeah I yeah. you know I think what you do in in many ways is art now with with your with this system mm -hmm. and with the um the kind of flow that you have during during a session mm -hmm. and the the creativity of what you have to bring forth in order to really hone into somebody else's vibration and right. to try to to create something that is more more for them right is mm -hmm. is more elevated for them um anyway for me it was always kind of like second nature when it came to again that idea of what art is mm. and the process of healing into it was it's it's very simply what i said before it's the integration of it into my daily life into recognizing that we can really we can we can be very aware of who we are you know i'm i have very high energy i have anxiety which is not necessarily a bad thing it's just there yeah. and rather than fighting it to start kind of threading it into the quality of how i want to live every moment of my life mm. within the magic of what this life is it just yeah. simply is um and the more that I do that, the more I'm discovering that life opens up for me. Yes. <laughs> and, and that it's not even in, in, a, in a way that is reflected by what is societally regarded as success, mm -hmm. you know, although sometimes it shows itself that way. Of course, yeah. <laughs> but it, it really is from the moment of waking up to the moment of closing one's eyes mm. in a kind of holistic of experiencing a day that is just magical and a miracle <laughs> right because that's it because we're not guaranteed another day are we and so of course we have to be so grateful every day we wake up is a new day and another chance to live and to be and to create whatever it is our soul's calling but I think unless especially when you're dealing with you know you mentioned anxiety and when you're dealing with trauma it's very difficult sometimes to wake up and have that mindset of being magical and creating because it, there's so many other things and emotions that are playing into it that can sometimes block that from happening I mean as an artist and a creative I mean how did you navigate that when you were going through your own trauma and times of, of challenge I mean how did you then be able to wake up and show up as this creative Oh, I, thank you. That's a beautiful, beautiful question. And I'd love, I'd love to hear from you too. Um, you know, part of it, one of the, 
the things that's a, a really an enormous gift as a as a as an artist is that you learn very early on the the um, the importance of practice mm. and you you know and when you're a little kid it's it's annoying and you sometimes you don't want to do it <laughs> but it becomes part of the the thing right yeah. the thing itself without it a lot of it just doesn't exist exactly and practice is what you create in your life when you want to make it whole <laughs> yes. and and that it it actually paralleled for me and that was is that's, that's what it was it it is one of the deepest qualities in my life that carries me th me through yeah. um so that no matter where i was whether i was completely in a desperate place or, or, and nowadays too, you know, you wake up sometimes you're hormonal or who knows yeah. what's happening. And um, I just go back to the practice. I just go back to mm. whether it's sitting meditation yeah. or walking or moving meditation as in soul cycle mm. um, or calling a healer that really responds and resonates with me and, and continuing that work. Yeah. Um, and then I have to say for me, and I know that's not a truth, an, an overarching truth for, for anybody, but um, I, I have to be, say in the deepest honesty that, that, and in deepest gratitude that whatever I was going through in life that was difficult, for some reason, part of my upbringing, part of the, the genetic makeup of me always had a quality of really um, just being completely in awe of life mm -hmm. and, and, and in, in, in love with life. Yeah. In love with life, yeah. truly in love with life. <laughs> so that even when it felt like I wasn't quite sure cognitively or even in my heart why I'm living this life, mm -hmm something that was even deeper you know higher self god goddess whatever one calls it um was always beckoning the idea of of the sacredness of it and the sanctity of it and uh the quality of its unquestionable value you know? just that inner knowing just that yeah. inner Inner knowledge, knowledge. That inner knowledge. Exactly. and being so in tune with that and i think like you say the practice of practice is what will connect you to that, you know, because you have to continue every single day with whatever it is, the smallest little step, just taking a walk outside or just breathing and setting meditating is just the practice of doing um, allows that connection to then give you that confidence to, to keep showing up, to keep moving forward. But to have that from such a young age, that awe and that, you know, awareness of how beautiful life is, is, is really quite something. I don't think many people will probably say that. Thank you. I, I don't, I mean, I, that I don't have, I, I, I thank my parents for it, you know, and, yeah. and I thank the divine. I, I just mm -hmm. some, somehow, and a lot of it sometimes came through conflict, not necessarily through, I mean, I, it still does, I, I'm in awe of really when when I spend time outside looking at a flower right. at the ocean at a human being smiling back at me I can't describe the the whole body experience of of thanks that I have for that um, but in some ways when things were difficult I grew up in Israel and sometimes you know life seemed kind of this overwhelm that too actually ignited and um and almost like turned on that that quality of appreciation of life mm -hmm. you know and and um i don't i'm not sure yet in my own life how to really be able to bring that to others i think that i do through my art in some ways let me just tell you there exactly that you totally exactly the, through the expression of your art I mean I can speak to um you know you were very gracious enough to come and perform at a women's retreat that I hosted a couple of years ago Absolutely. and I have to tell you that the impact that you had on every single woman at that event was so powerful I mean 
you literally cracked open every single one of those ladies with your voice and the art that you performed. I mean, I remember sitting there and seeing these women just tears streaming. I know I was quite, you know, you have that power just through the voice and the work that you do. And that there is a gift into its own. Um, and that's what it's, it's you. It means and so much to me. I can't tell you just thank you. Thank you. And, you know, and thank you for allowing me to participate there. Yeah. Uh, in some ways, that was also a stepping stone for me in this realization of, and I think that's what you're doing with your life as well, mm. of taking these qualities within ourselves, not no longer falling into this kind of whirlwind of false humility, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. It has nothing to do with showing off. It's just recognizing that these are gifts. Yeah. And then starting to create um, a mindset that says, I want to be of service with these gifts. Yes. I want to give what I can. Mm. Uh, the only reason I say I still don't know is because I, I don't have quite yet like the, I'm, I, it's not, there's not a system in place quite yet, except mm. for my art. Yes. Uh, because I, I think I can go even deeper. And I have been in some ways, um, I, I do a lot of now, more and more, although now with, with the last year was a break from that, mm -hmm. but, um, but I do more and more teaching uh, in groups, workshops and master classes, you know, and they, they center on music and on vocal production and these kind of things, but I've given up trying to be professionally technical about them. I really incorporate and anything and everything that I can that has to do with spirit mm -hmm. and with connecting to spirit and with, you know, know. meditation. And, and that's what I teach. Yeah. And I see that becoming something that will be an even greater path in my life for sharing mm -hmm. all that. I agree with you um, because we already said before, you know, it's how the world is shifting is moving towards more spirit and metaphysical because that's the way that we have to be and to be of service what can we you know bring to this planet to this world before we leave our time here like there has to be more that we can do and I think as well like you say coming back to this last 12 months through COVID I mean we talked about that before and we were saying you know that it's given so many of us you know everybody it's either been it's been so challenging for everybody across the board nobody has escaped without some kind of challenge from COVID but at the same time you know we were saying that also there has been a beautiful side to it because it's allowed us so much more time to reflect because we've had all this time I mean how have you found that's affected you in the last 12 months I mean you, you and I've talked about it and I see you have taken you've taken yourself you brought everything inside and now you're exploding hmm. and that's literally and that's that's the best way to have used it you know yeah um and beyond that and I, I know again it will mirror a lot of your experience I I learned a lot more surrender to you know it was a word that I had con I had contemplated before but this absolutely said well you want to contemplate it further here you go here's a year where you might not have any work you may you know all of these things the people that you're close with you may not be able to see them right all of these things and can you find that quality of interconnectedness of center of connect of self connection of absolute moving from kindness and love regardless of what's happening around um mm -hmm. of really sifting also uh i about four years ago as as i was separating from my my ex-husband mm -hmm. um i learned more and more the quality of I've never been a big like news fan, mm -hmm. you know, and it, and I think it is important to know what's happening and to be uh, informed and, and also aware of where where other people are and what they're going through, so that you can help them if you if exactly. if you can if you have what to offer, but not being in that obsessive cycle of news, mm -hmm. and this year has actually done cracked that open for me even further of really mm -hmm. saying, well, is this something that I'm learning about that's just creating more drama in, internally, mm -hmm. or is it actually something that that is good for me to know? So again, so I can bring it forth in a positive way. Yeah. And um, I've learned so much about the kindness of other other people towards me. I've, mm -hmm. I've received so much support and help. 
and surrendering to that, mm. right? Uh, I think both you and I relate in this, but my journey has al also been one of, um, as cheesy as it sounds, of really learning what the word receiving is mm. and, um, and what a humbling and what a what a humbling experience it could be and what a gift it is towards the person giving you something yeah and uh this year has re has really brought it in into my into my awareness i and think a lot of so contemplation you know yeah and and a lot of the, I, I and i think you know, one of the, the words that we've heard thrown around a lot over the last 12 months is pivot. People are pivoting all the time now and how are we going to pivot here and there? And and I, I kind of got a little bit over that word, honestly. And, and I think you're right with what you're saying. It's more surrendering and receiving because we can't change it. And yes, we can pivot and we can twist here and do that. But I think surrendering to it and allowing is a, just a much more graceful way of, of going with the flow and going with stream downstream rather than trying to fight against it and pivot pivot what am I going to do now what's coming next and that creates even more angst and even more anxiety because you feel the pressure and I know that certainly for me in the first half of last year I felt so much pressure to try and now what now what and it didn't serve me at all it really didn't it probably sent me more into a spin and put more pressure on my nervous system then and like you say and knowing what was going on in the world and being aware of it but not allowing all of that trauma and putting even more pressure onto our emotional bodies you know that emotional diet that we're feeding ourselves is that going to be something that is inspiring and uplifting or is it something that's going to be really damaging and traumatizing to our nervous systems when we're already overloaded exactly thank you for sharing that by the way because mm -hmm. um what it brought up for me is also uh these ideas of starting to really about in, 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 I don't mean it in a gender way at all, but about the divine feminine mm. and, and that our, our world and our, the era that we're entering mm. um, is much more in the embrace of this, of this quality of the divine feminine. Yeah. And that has to do a lot with surrender mm. and, and that, maybe the the idea of what a goal is what success is what achievements are yeah. those those can pivot yeah. <laughs> we don't have to pivot those things can pivot and we can start saying you know the goal is the process the goal is the connection <laughs> the goal is the, the the way that i'm relating to somebody and to the world and to the earth mm. um, and to my body yeah. And, um, and realizing that it is, you know, everything, that goal, that achievement, that success, it all starts from within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And unless you give yourself time to, to sink into that and reflect, then it's very difficult. And to constantly be looking outside of ourselves to find the goal or the pot at the end of the rainbow is not always the necessarily the right, the right way. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm curious, I mean, obviously you've had a few sessions of Harmonium. Um, and I'm just curious how you found that, if that, how that kind of integrated into your journey during the process. Well, the, and I cannot wait to, to do more. I, <laughs> I know, no, I know, you know, this, this year came and then you had to stop and it was, it was such a funny kind of way of being introduced to something so wonderful and exciting and then being like, okay, patient, <laughs> surrender, I'll yeah. wait till she's back. Um, this goes back a bit to the beginning of our conversation because so much of it has to do with a vibrational quality of, of opening up and kind of allowing the, the right vibrations to come through. Yeah. And, and again, that's what is so, I, I'm flabbergasted by your, your capacity to, to hone into that. It's very musical, you know, mm. it, it is, it really, I, I don't know if you know that, but it is yeah. something very musical about it. Um, and you're, you are almost like a musician playing on the instrument of somebody else's body when you, mm. when you do that. That's a beautiful that's, way to describe it, actually. That's how it feels to me, that yeah. I'm, I'm, this, I'm this instrument and you're, you're allowing yourself to really play my body to the to its fullest potential mm. to its to its most most exuberant 
Um, That's interesting because, yeah, because I'm, you know, I'm not really, all I'm doing is, is moving through the process and it's allowing you to do it yourself. So that's quite an interesting way to look at it. And I've not heard it explained that way before. So I just love that correlation between obviously you being the artist and the musician and all of these amazing things and to the way that you actually experienced harmonium as a system for you, for your personal experience of it. Yeah, it, it feels like a, a music session. And and that's that's part of what I absolutely love about it. Um, it and also the, the quality of your um, concentration, yeah, you, yeah, uh, is is so it 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 creates that that carpet of oneness that mm. we seek. That's how I I felt coming out. Is the the non separation really really becomes uh, much much more apparent? You know, right. it you feel you don't feel like your own enclosed separate little self. Yeah. <laughs> and that's part of that. Well, the because that's part. one of the beautiful things that it's doing is it's raising your consciousness and raising your awareness. So it does give you that perspective to look at things much more broadly. And so feeling much more connected to everything because the light is turning on. Exactly. Um, you know, and it's, and I, I, you know, sometimes I say to people, I, I think I actually have the best job in the world. Sorry. <laughs> but to ah. be able to be in that space where you have to be so neutral to allow just create because then I'm I'm you know at the same time as healing helping somebody else to heal themselves you know it's also very healing for me as well and so you know if I've had a day-to-day back-to-back sessions you know I come out like literally floating <laughs> imagine I, can. Oh, I mean I can and I can yeah but so yeah that's a beautiful description and to be able to have that um and I can't wait for you to have more sessions, but did you feel like from a perspective of dealing with anxiety and with the nervous system, would you say that, you know, you really felt that benefit? Did it bring a lot of stuff Oh my up? God, not, not only benefit, again, because I think more expanded consciousness mm. is exactly the right way to describe it. It's almost like the, your, you've, you know, how in a lot of uh, kind of more cognitive, uh, meditation and when you when you really hone in to to in Buddhist writings and all this when you become more of an observer of the awareness yeah. um, this puts it in a very physical level of, mm-hmm. of becoming more of an observer so things like anxiety you're not associating you're not identifying yeah. um, they're not blinding you to to being able to take take a step back and that's that's the quality that is yeah. it's priceless it's yeah. beyond really beyond value <laughs> yeah that's beautiful oh, thank you so much for sharing that because i think so many people just can't really um grasp how it would feel and how it would be so i think it's beautiful to have you know people that have had it to experience it and to be able to express how because everybody experiences it as a different a different way and every session you have is different every single time it's never the same session the same it's the same session for me to to give but it's never the same experience for you as a client every single session is so different entirely so that's well it's so it's really tricky isn't it because we we're coming from an intelligence with so much of what i do what you do all of these things that we're talking about that is not it's almost non-verbal we can talk about it. We can try talking about it. Right? We can describe. There's little keywords that we use, um, but the actual knowing, the actual intelligence, sits solar plexus, heart, yeah. gut, right, sacral center, yeah. other places in the body, and uh, and the communication of it is nonverbal. And so, yeah, the, so we try. We try and do our best. And really, that's my that's my best way to describe it is actually it takes you to that space in between mm-hmm. and um and allows more space to open up Back to allowing and surrendering oh love that so let's talk about the work that you're doing now because again you know you've moved on and like you said it's always changing and the one thing we said is that the only thing that's constant is change and we have to embrace change because it's nothing it's every single day is changing and so the way that your work is now unfolding and the way that you are I mean I'll let you talk more but really looking to heal the planet and really looking at bringing that kind of element 
through the work that you do, through your gift, through your music and your talent. So talk to us about that. Hallelujah. Um, I mean, it's the, this year has been interesting because uh, I can, there's, there's um, uh, one of my artistic partners, um, his name is Shay Welsh. Uh, he's a fantastic guitar player, composer, mm -hmm. songwriter, and, um, and producer as well. And he, he and I have a real passion for, for environmentalism and for really healing and bringing back more of a holistic well, well-beingness to our earth. Yeah. And um, kind of a side note, he, he, he's on the board of, of directors of this company called, uh, they're, uh, called Geoversity, who uh, they, they're in Panama and they're this group that does uh, basically rainforest conservation. That's, that's, that's been their main thing. Right. Um, and a few years back, he, he would go every summer or every, no, I think we actually went during springtime. Mm. Uh, so this is maybe two and a half, three years back. He brought me on to do a, a series of concerts for a conference they were holding that stopped, that, you know, because these, these ideas have been in the air for now, you know, a good decade or two of kind of starting to incorporate big business people into the ideas of can their businesses become more intelligent in the ways of interconnecting with the earth and with their business practices becoming more about learning from earth processes and these kind of things. Yeah. Um, and it blew my mind again. It was just this amazing thing. And I've, I've become since very closely associated with this, with this group as well. Yeah. And um, through this year, he and I started first, we were just talking a lot about environmental stuff because it, it gave a pause. I'm sure you noticed the air was so much cleaner and birds were starting to sing everywhere. And, you know, and, um, and everybody was finding connection to, to our, to this mother, to this big mother that we have, because you'd have to go, you have nobody to be with and you know, you're, and you're going outside and just kind of spending time with, with nature. Um, and we, through it, we, this was near Christmas, we wrote a, a Christmas song mm -hmm. <laughs> called Merry Christmas Mother Earth that has to do with giving back. Yeah. And um, we always have been very interested we, for a few years it, about kind of making also a group that incorporates world music and is very multicultural. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of the next big project. And I'm, I'm super, super excited about it. Um, we're going into a recording studio next week and we have this amazing tabla player, Indian tabla player. His name is Aditya Kalyanpur. Mm -hmm. And um, he joined us during this COVID year. And we've just been making music together. And our, our hope is that somehow the art incorporates itself, itself yeah. to causes like, you know, to festivals and things that have to do with healing our earth and with, with some kind of possibility of helping that. Mm. Um, and a lot of the music that we're do making and, and covering and all of that is, is connected to that. And that's just so beautiful. And you. you know, to have as an act of service and to be giving back and to, and is again, just a healing quality in itself. Yes, just entirely. Mm -hmm. to, to support this world, this planet that we're on. I mean, that's just phenomenal, phenomenal. Thank you. I can't wait to hear more. I honestly, and I've heard some bits because you're always posting little bits here on mm -hmm. social media and it's just breathtaking. It is, it's just the power. I mean, then that's, you know, people, music as an escapism whatever form of music you're listening to you know whether it's hard rock or classical or you know hip-hop or whatever it is it's so healing because it takes you out of what do you I mean what do you think it is about music that's so healing part of it is again non non-descriptive right it's effervescent it's the it's the magic of the world yeah. um there's the, there's something about it that we really that the the reason it is partly healing is because it doesn't need words it has words and those are wonderful but excuse me <laughs> they're, they're <laughs> my piano um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but it it goes beyond, right? It's like deeper into the words or deeper into the meaning of things. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, there's from from all eras of poetry, you know, James Joyce to Rumi to whatever. Um, they talk about the, the 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 quality of the music of 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 our of our of our world of the nat of the natural quality of of the world, and scientifically, it really all does boil down to a sort of vibrational relationship. <laughs> yeah, and that's that it. we're more and more learning in 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 physics terms is actually true. Um, yeah. So I think there's something there in music that really just is a, is a is a is a, an arrow to yeah. the to that place that vibrates. Well, that's it. The vibrational state of being. Yeah, exactly. Is that it? And you know, being you know, we're all energetic beings, and yeah, I mean, the studies and the research that they've done, and just to show how the sound and the vibration can change literally the molecular structure of the body. Mm -hmm you know, down to such a cellular level. And so by listening to something, regardless of the mood, it's gonna change your mood. You know, and they start Entirely. feeling in that place of angst and, and, you know, real dark space, put on some kind of music and jump around else or whatever, or just listen to something to allow it to change that mindset and that feeling, that energetic state that you're in. And your it's music, I mean, seriously, it's just beyond powerful. Mm. So beautiful. Thank you. You're so beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> so where can everybody find you? Because we want people to be able to find you, to hear more about all this amazing work that you're doing moving forward and to listen to the work that you've already done and created. So where's the best place for people to find you? Not my website, because that's the other <laughs> <laughs> um, long story. It'll eventually get made, but it yeah. probably won't be for a year or so. Yeah. Um, and all the all the information there is wrong anyway it's just one hold page and okay so not the website that. That. <laughs> yeah. um, and really on all the the social media stuff um right. although strangely enough i've taken i've taken about a month of a, of a break i just felt that it was the right thing yeah. but but it it's ongoing um mm -hmm. my my love relationship with with sharing there yeah uh, and that's you know instagram just yeah under my name Facebook under my name, YouTube, there's more and more content. Um, and there's an actual page that, um, that that's mine. And uh, yeah, and just search it up and things will start flowing your way. Yeah, oh and I just can't wait until we're allowed to be back in person. I mean, I've had the, the joy of being able to see you twice perform twice live, and it's just breathtaking and just I'm just so that's amazing. I have to say that's actually starting to to pick up as well and I'm oh. so I know there really truly is nothing like yeah. for me um you yeah, know it's like sex and chocolate I don't mm. know but but, <laughs> <laughs> but but this communication that I get to be making singing for people and feeling yeah. feeling that back and forth yeah. um yeah and I've my manager and I have already been talking. There's things already getting scheduled. So thank you. I'm just yes. so, so thankful. So happy about that. Can't wait. <laughs> it has been such a pleasure. I'm just so grateful for you to come and share your time with us and to share your gifts and everything. And I really, truly hope, I mean, what would be your one piece of advice you think to, for the audience if they were listening sort of, just one thing that you think that they would benefit. Oh my from. God. I was going to say two, go, go oh, get two. a harmonium, go get a harmonium <laughs> session with, because I thank you for the grace and and the this the the gift of what you're doing. Mm. Uh, it's it's truly it's it's an honor to be part of it and yeah. such an important thing for the world. Um, just I would say just take it easy and and try to have fun. Oh, love that! Yes, remember to have yeah. fun. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. <gasps> Well, it's always fun when I see you. And again, so grateful. Just love you so much. All right, darling, have a beautiful afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. The best, bye. Thank you so much for joining me today. I truly hope that you enjoyed the show. And there is at least one thing that you can take away from today's episode that will help you build that sustainable healing toolkit. 
it would mean the absolute world to me if you would subscribe to the show, give it a five-star review, and share this or any of the other episodes with somebody that you feel could really benefit by listening. I look forward to seeing you next time.